This is the KLSU Tailgate Show, the LSU Student Media Football Pregame Show, live from the KLSU Studio. Welcome into the Tailgate Show. I am your host, Patricia Caputo. Today joining me is Liam Haley and Tiger TV's Nick Lopez. How are we doing today? Doing pretty good. Doing good. Glad to be here. I'm so glad to hear that. Today we are excited to be here as we will be giving our breakdown and analysis of the New Mexico versus LSU game. LSU will take on New Mexico in Tiger Stadium at 6.30 p.m on Saturday and let's do what we do best which is talk about sports starting off with this LSU offense Jaden Daniels has been such a focal point for this offense since the beginning of the season in their first game against Florida State with that Jaden Daniels has also heavily been involved in this running game for LSU how many yards will Jaden Daniels have rushing this week Liam um, I feel like we'll have a, a good bit just considering you know how he's led the team in rushing you know over the past couple of games I know we're getting John Emery back and you know we have a money good win in Noah Kane but I feel like you know with our offense being so heavily dependent on his uh, scrambling I feel like he'll have a good bit of yards yeah like Liam was saying I think he'll get like in the 70s or 80s but I do not expect him to lead the Tigers in rushing this week uh, with Goodwin I think he'll pick off where he uh, left off last week and I think Emery is going to get a bigger role as the season progresses so I expect him to eventually take over as the Tigers main run. Now Jaden Daniels that is such an asset for him he's able to beat quarterbacks not only with his arm with his mind but also his legs now he ran for 114 yards against Florida State he led the Tigers last week against Mississippi State with 93 yards I do believe that he does the same what I'd like to see less of is him running in situations where it's not necessarily needed for this offense against Mississippi State. There were a few times where he did run the ball just to try to get a few yards, but we had nearly secured the win, so I would like to see that get cleaned up. As Nick has mentioned, John Emery Jr. will be back again this week for the Tigers. He made his debut for the first time in two years last week in their win against Mississippi State. How many yards will John Emery Jr. run this week, and is he expected to see a little more afield? Uh, I feel like he's going to get, you know, more touches just because last game was like, you know, he was getting off the rust game. He didn't get too many touches. I feel like he'll get, you know, maybe 50, 60, but I feel like our offense isn't too predicated on the run. Um, I feel like he'll, he'll get his yards and, you know, he'll, he'll put in some work, but uh, I'm seeing, you know, 50, 60 yards from John Emery. See, I, I agree with Liam. He is going to get more touches, but I think with Kayshawn being out, LSU is going to look to run the ball more. John Emery is going to get more touches, so I can see him 75, 80 plus. I wouldn't be surprised if he had triple digits, though, too. I agree with Nick in the sense that I could see him hitting 70 this week. He had 32 last week against Mississippi State, but Brian Kelly from the beginning said John Emery Jr. is not expected to see a whole lot of playing time. Does he? He's still trying to get used to this offense as this is a new offense, a new quarterback, a new head coach that he is not used to and it's more of a comfortability thing. Armani Goodwin we could see a lot of action from, and possibly Josh Williams, who scored a touchdown for LSU last week. But expecting to see John Emery Jr. not only ha develop a healthy run game, but also help block with an offensive line for LSU that does have its struggles at time. With that, can LSU continue to start this balance of this run passing game and try to bring this offense to life for LSU? I think they will have a little bit of a balance, but like I said, I think they're going to lean more towards the run this week with Kayshawn being out, with trying to get John Emery back into the flow of things, especially against a smaller opponent. I think this is a big week for him to get that run game going. Yeah, I mean, I hope they can get a good run, uh, run pass balance because that's just a good thing to have as a football team, and especially you know going into two SEC games with Auburn and Tennessee, I feel like that would be a great thing to do to you know get this offense going and you know not to disrespect New Mexico State, but this is a game where we can you know test some things out, see if we can get this balance good. Correct, I agree. This is the week to figure out everything that you have not figured out so far in this season. With that being a run game, trying to develop that healthy pass run game for this LSU offense until, as you all said, we get into the bulk of our SEC play. I was expected to go into the show today and talk a lot about Kayshawn Booty. Can Jaden Daniels and him finally develop a connection? But Kayshawn will not be playing this week against New Mexico State as he welcomed his son last night, which was Thursday, September 22nd. So congratulations to Kayshawn, and he will be absent from the team this weekend. With that being said, Dante, Dante Martin is what you could say the best cornerback there for New Mexico State. He was expected to go up and against Kayshawn. 
Who will Dante Martin go up against this weekend? Um, I feel like it'll be Malik just because of how big, he, uh, you know, the big plays he had against Mississippi State. Um, Malik has been, you know, coming into his own as a, as one of our better options as a wide receiver. And we knew he had talent before uh, this season, but, you know, he's just been playing out of his mind, especially with uh, Kayshawn not getting the ball as much. So I feel like he's going to get covered. Yeah, I do agree with Liam. I think they'll have Martin move around a little bit primarily for most of the game. He will be going up against Malik. With uh, He had 76 yards last week to lead the Tigers, I think. He's going to be the main receiver for the Tigers again this week. I think that's who Martin has to cover. I agree with you both. Malik has just been a guy that when we had Cam Lewis on the show, he said there's high expectations, and that was after that Florida State game where he had two muff punts, but he also went five for five. And then last week against Mississippi State, he was crucial in helping us score potentially the touchdown that secured the win for LSU. I could see Malik doing that again. He doesn't seem to be slowing down, and now with Kayshawn out, he is that threat to that wide receiver core. With that being said, what do we expect to see from him? And will there be a point in the game that LSU is up by so many points and they've secured their win that Malik Neighbors is taken out of this game? Yeah, I think Malik will come out of the game at some point. I think around the third quarter is when it'll start getting out of hand a little bit more because I think the New Mexico defense is scrappy. So I think they might have like a performance similar to last week. Not as dominant as LSU's, but where they keep him in the game in the first half and then the second half is where everything takes off for him. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. I feel like, you know, we're going to – it's going to be a fight in, in the very beginning, but it's going to get out of hand. And, you know, uh, Malik's going to get a lot of attention, so he's not going to get as many yards that, you know, you would think just because he's going to be the main pass option. So I feel like he's going to, you know, get some yards, and then once it gets out of hand, it will get, you know, taken out the game for rest. I agree. I, Jolari Jenkins could be a guy that has a big game just because there's so much tension on neighbors this week, and he will most likely eventually come out of this game and possibly along with a guy like Jaden Daniels if LSU can score enough points for us to understand that we have won this game. Now, with that, you're going to have to take out guys like Malik Neighbors, possibly Jolari Jenkins, and put in other wideouts who haven't seen as much action this season like guys like Brian Thomas Jr. and Jack Besh. How important is this game this weekend for them if they can get into the game to prove that they deserve more playing time? Um, I feel like, you know, for Jack Besh, he's kind of already proved himself last year. He just hasn't been getting, you know, the targets that I feel like he deserves. But I feel like for Brian Thomas, if he can get in and show that he, you know, the, the talent that I know he has, uh, I feel like, you know, he can do something really good for the Tigers and be a, a good receiver for us, you know, to come in for, for Malik or for someone, you know, for a couple snaps and, you know, make some big plays. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you can get these guys in, it's super important. Get them reps, get them touches because – with you going into the SEC play, the more depth that you have in any position is great. So get these guys some reps, get them going before big bulk your schedule comes up. What's interesting to see about this LSU wide receiver core is that it's not so much that Jack Besh and Brian Thomas aren't good players. It's just that someone else is slightly better than them and guys like Malik Neighbors, who are obviously one of the best wide receivers in the SEC in booty. So it's not so much that they can't play or that they're just not good enough. It's just that there's just not enough room on this offense. But with a game like this, Liam, as you were saying, this does open opportunities for a guy like Jack Besh, Brian Thomas Jr. to come in and make big plays when needed when some other guys need a rest. To wrap the LSU offense up, what do they need to do this weekend to help clean up their offensive line issues before we get into the bulk of SEC play? I feel like a lot of it is just, you know, discipline and just not getting as many penalties because, you know, with, with LSU running, like, that kind of hurry up, like, really quick tempo offense, that's what gets us points in most of these games. And, you know, if the offensive line can't keep up and they keep getting snap penalties, you know, uh, like false starts and everything, that'll hurt us, you know, in SEC play. So if we don't get that cleaned up, it'll hurt us. Yeah, obviously the penalties put you off schedule a lot, and you can't have that with the LSU offense. But I still think they need to hold their blocks and just stay strong up front. You need to give Dan a clean pocket and time because I do see him having to improvise a lot due to the poor offensive line play at times. The offensive line has to work on these penalties. That was one of the reasons in the beginning of the Mississippi State game I thought that LSU could lose this game strictly on penalties. They had a few snap infractions in the beginning of this Mississippi State game. They were called for a false start on the entire offensive line. I know that they're young. I know you have two freshmen on the left and the right side, but there's just certain things that you have to pull together quickly because this isn't going to work as you go throughout the remainder of your season and play teams like Ole Miss and Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama. The list goes on and on. So this is a great week to try to clean up some of those mistakes. Let's move on to this New Mexico defense. 
This may not be an equal matchup as we were They're their best cornerback, but there's some other guys in the secondary that are really good as well. You know, guys like Jarek Reed and, you know, Ronald Wilson are both safeties. I've been making big plays for them. You know, Jarek Reed, he leads the team in tackles with 25, and, and Ronald Wilson has two picks for the season, you know, leading the team. So I feel like those are some other guys in the secondary that could also give us problems if we don't prepare for them. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of Jarek Reed, like Liam was saying. Tackle machine for the Lobos. Already have 25 tackles, like uh, Liam was saying. And who doesn't love a good hard nose uh, hitting safety? You know, always looking to tackle somebody. You're right. I want to talk a moment about Rico Hanna. Now he did have his interception against UTEP last week in their 27 to 10 victory, where they were able to go two and one on the season. And what's interesting about Rico is that he has seven years of experience in college football. He came from Highland Community College to New Mexico in 2020, was injured, so got a medical red shirt, and then, due to COVID-19, the NCAA granted all fall athletes an extra year of eligibility. So, Rico Hanna is 24 years old, and just to put that into terms, you have our offensive lineman, Will Campbell, who is 18, Emory Jones is 18, Malik Neighbors, who's supposed to be our star wide out this weekend, who is 19 years old. Can some of this experience that Hannah has, well, seven years of it, that most players don't have the opportunity to get, even rattle this LSU offense perhaps a little bit? I mean, a little bit. Just, you know, if you have that much experience, you, you're going to know what you're doing, obviously, and you're going to be able to know the little things that, the, you know, guys like Will Campbell and other guys like, you know, th they wouldn't know. But, you know, if you look at the stats, um, you know, the offensive line, they, they allowed zero QB pressures that whole game, and that's pretty impressive for some freshmen. So I'm not saying that, you know, they won't rattle them at all, but I don't think it'll be too big of a problem for the Tigers. Yeah, I don't think the Tigers are really worried about uh, Hannah's experience. I think he's more of a factor on the New Mexico New Mexico side of the ball, I think they look at him as a leader with someone that has that much experience, but I don't think the Tigers are that big on him. Correct. He can lead them, but what the, what's promising for LSU is that their offensive line does just seem to slowly get better each week. There's just little things you have to clean up, like the penalties, that it's just because they're young and because they're not so used to playing at the college football level. Other than that, LSU doesn't seem to be the team that gets rattled, especially in pressure situations where they easily could have been last week against an SEC team in Mississippi State. To wrap up this Mexico State, this New Mexico defense, let's talk about Cody Moon, the linebacker, who, the sophomore linebacker. What will be his role for the Lobos this weekend? Um, I feel like he'll be a pass rusher. If you look at the stats, he has three and a half sacks on the season for, uh, you know, 25 sack outs. So um, I feel like he'll be an edge rusher. But, you know, with, uh, like I said before, how, you know, there's zero, uh, zero could be pressures. I feel like he's going to give us some problems, but not too many to, you know, affect the game in a big way. Yeah, I think Hannah is going to rush the passer a little bit, but since I do think the Tigers are going to lean more on the run, I think he is going to be looking to break through the offensive line and blow up some of the Tigers' run plays. Correct. I could not agree more. The goal is to pretty much stop Jaden Daniels at this point because the Tigers' run game hasn't been as efficient as some may hope by this time, but Jaden Daniels has been such an asset to this team. Cody Moon had 44 tackles last year for New Mexico. He's already at 21 this season. So to get a tackle against an SEC opponent would be quite impressive for this New Mexico offense, especially as this is the first meeting against LSU versus New Mexico. Let's move on to this New Mexico offense and talk about running back Sherrod White. How will that match up against B.J. Ojolari and Ali Gay this weekend? I mean, Sherrod White's a great player, and, you know, he leads the Lobos in rushing yards, but, I mean, going up against guys like B.J. Ojolari and Ali Gay and even standout freshman Harold Perkins, I feel like, you know, he's going to have a tough time running the ball, and, I mean, he'll get his, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah, I think whatever way the Lobo is trying to attack the Tigers' defense this week is not going to be fun after that momentum they built last week against Mississippi State. But when you're trying to go head first at their two of their best defensive players, I, I think it's going to be a long night for any of the Lobos running backs, really. Correct. I agree. The thing about Sherrard White is that they have been using him more as a wide receiver, so while he is a running back, you may see a guy like Nathaniel Jones out there in the backfield and Sherrod White possibly – being more a part of that receiving core as he did go for two receptions, 35 yards, and averaging 17.5 yards per reception last week. And Gerard White has the opportunity to possibly make plays, but it will be difficult as they need to be stopped by Liam, as you mentioned, Harold Perkins, and B.J. Ojolari, Ali Gay included. Do the Lobos try to run the ball a little bit more, or do they try to get this passing game going this weekend? Um, I feel like, of course, it'll be it'll be a bit of both. But, you know, with how well a defensive line has been playing, I feel like they're not going to try and run the ball too much just because of you're basically just running into a brick wall with Ali Gay and uh, B.J. Ojolari coming around the corner. So um, I feel like there's gonna be, they're going to try and pass it more, but that's not even safe because, you know, we have, you have Jay Ward yeah, out there, you know, playing in place. So it's going to be hard for the Lobos. 
Yeah, I don't think the Tigers' defense really has any main weaknesses right now, but I think the secondary would be easier to break than the D-line for the Lobos, so I think they would have to rely on their pass game a lot more. What concerns me about their pass game is that their quarterback, Miles Kendrick, he, the most he's ever thrown for is 166 yards while he was at Kansas. He transferred last season, and now he's at New Mexico State, won the starting job. He did throw for 111 yards against UTEP in their win last week. So what concerns me is that a guy like, as we had mentioned before, BJ, Ollie, they're just going to get to the quarterback so quickly with an offensive line who struggles. I could see him make plays against LSU. I mean, it, you know, if he can get moving early and get away from our pass rush, I mean, he can make some plays. But as you said, he, he really isn't that good of a passer, you know, racking up passing yards. So even if he does get out, you know, we have linebackers that can catch him. We can – he's not the fastest runner. So, I mean, it'll be a long day for him if he has to keep scrambling out of the pocket trying to get away from Ali Gay and B.J. Ojolari. Yeah, I think that D-line is definitely hungry after last week. B.J. had multiple sacks. Harold Perkins had multiple sacks. So I expect them to continue off of that, and I do think Kendrick will be on the ground a lot this week. I could see that as well, Nick, as Miles Kendrick. I see him scrambling a lot coming out of the pocket. Just to give you some information on their running backs, we mentioned Nathaniel Jones, we mentioned Sherrard White, but this New Mexico State offense has already ran the ball with 11 different players this season. So they're trying to get anything or something going, having someone step up. And Miles Kendrick, unfortunately, is just going to be that guy who's going to have to take the pressure. And as Nick said, could be on his back a lot this season. With that, the quarterback, Miles Kendricks, has already been sacked 11 times this season. How many times could he get sacked this weekend against LSU, Liam? I mean, you could see it from, you know, from the low side from like three or four to anywhere from five to six just because of how good our defensive line is. You know, they, they got through Mississippi State's uh, offensive line, and not saying that Mississippi State's offensive line is elite, but, you know, it's an SEC offensive line, and now that you're going against, you know, New Mexico State, I feel like we're going to be able to get through and get them down. Yeah, I think the bar for that LSU D-line is like four. That should be the minimum they should be looking going into the game. But anything after that, I think, is land yet at that point. I don't know. Right. Yeah. The only reason I could say five or six probably at that minimum is just because they will take out BJ. They'll take out Ollie Gay. There's no need to risk an injury if the Tigers seem that they have already secured this win before the game is over, similar to a game versus Southern. Now, New Mexico, what's also concerning is that they have a fairly new offense in terms of transfer. Sherrod White transferred from Mount St. Janko this offseason, and then you had Miles Kendrick, as I mentioned before, transfer from Kansas. What mistakes may we see in this offense due to those transfers and them trying to still get used to a new offense? I mean, of course, you can see some penalties and just some missed plays because, you know, if you're coming from a new place, uh, you, you know, you're not going to be completely immersed in the system yet. You're not going to know exactly what you're doing. So I feel like it's going to be hard for them to gel just because of how many transfers they had. And, I mean, we've had the same problem on defense, you know, with all these new transfers coming in from, you know, McNeese State and everywhere else that, you know, it's tough for them to get immersed into the system, like, immediately. So probably some penalties and just some, you know, normal mistakes. Yeah, I think for any teams built on a lot of transfers, communication is key, and you'll see a lot of communication issues come up. So whether it's like a bust in coverage or somebody runs the wrong route, I think that'll play a major role in the outcome this weekend. I see a lot of sloppiness this weekend. As Liam had mentioned, some penalties. Everyone's still trying to find their role. Where do they belong in this offense? Miles Kendrick does seem to be the leader, but how do these running backs fit into the offense? How do they develop themselves a healthy run pass game? There's a lot of questions for New Mexico, and – in short terms, if this game does get away from them and LSU has already practically won the game, they can use this time to possibly put in some of their backups, backups and see who else could possibly fit in this offense or defensive scheme for the team. Now, according to ESPN, LSU held Southern and Mississippi State to a combined 5 of 24 on third downs. With that, what will New Mexico State, how many New Mexico State convert third down conversions will there be, and what will they do to convert? Um, I'm, I don't really see too many third-down conversions just because of the talent disparity between the teams. Um, I mean, if they convert on anything, it'll probably just be, you know, after, you know, let's say it's a blowout and, you know, we have our backups in. Um, I mean, if they do uh, convert, I could see, you know, maybe, uh, you know, scrambling, you know, quarterback scrambling and getting the first down or, you know, maybe getting out of the pocket and throwing a pass. But I just don't see them running for too many yards or, or even converting any third downs. Yeah, I think if New Mexico State wants any chance of winning on Saturday, they need to have their third-down conversion percentage at around 70 I think that's like the sweet spot for them. But I've noticed the Tigers' defense, they step up in the bigger moments. They they like when uh, they get a third down stop. You see the energy after a stop, and I, 
I think 70 is just too high of a number for New Mexico to get to. Correct. With this New Mexico state, with this New Mexico offensive struggles, I don't see them converting a lot on third down, just because I am expecting to see a lot of third and tens, a lot of third and nines, which is clearly more difficult to convert down than a third and one or a third and two. I did want to mention that Mississippi State, when they did have those thirds down, they often went for like the fourth and one or the fourth and two, and they were able to to get it and improve. But as for New Mexico, I don't see them doing that this week, and this might be a heavily special teams game for this New Mexico State team. Let's move on, finally, to this LSU defense. We have seen them improve. We've also lost some guys, as in Mason Smith, at the beginning of the year, and there's also been some things that we might need to clean up. And let's start with Colby Richardson, the transfer from McNeese State. Will he take on the job of covering New Mexico wide receiver Luke Wysong? Personally, I mean, I, I really don't think so, and I kind of hope not. He hasn't really been playing the best. And, you know, with Luke Wysong is one of, if not, you know, the Lobos' best receiver coming into his sophomore season. He actually led the Lobos in receiving yards last year. So, you know, I can see someone like Seven Banks who's coming back for this game. I can see him, you know, covering him. He might be matched up with him. But, you know, if Colby's starting, then, you know, he'll eventually have to go against Wysong, and hopefully he can slow him down a bit when he's in the game. Yeah, I don't think uh, Richardson's going to be going up against Wysong a lot, but I do think this will be a game for him. It's like make or break. Going up against a small team, getting a chance to find his footing, I think this will be a key game for his season, honestly. I agree. Wysong last week against UTEP, five receptions, 37 yards. He led the team in reception yards. A guy that Colby Richardson could be going against is Jerron Porter. That's another guy to look out for, but Wysong is definitely that main target for this New Mexico team so I wouldn't see Colby Richardson lined up against him this weekend but is this the game that Richardson has to prove himself or he possibly doesn't play next week or in further SEC games yeah I mean you know like Nick said it's, it's this is kind of like a make or break game for him you know it, this is a game where it, if he plays well you know shuts down their best receiver then he might start getting some playing time in the SEC play but you know like we, we could you know experiment if he's not playing well we can put in you know someone like the Terrence Welsh someone else that hasn't gotten you know the shine that he has and see what they can do yeah with these small schools you have to take advantage you have to see what you can get out of your players and I think Colby Richardson needs to show what he is capable of this game definitely he this is the game where last week against Mississippi State it was just the fundamentals of football sometimes we're forgotten about simple things like making sure you turn around when it looks like the ball is thrown to the wide receiver that you're covering that things that he could have not done that causes a risk of penalties that hurts his defense and in the end this is a make or break game for him because you, you you can't have a player in there like that. You know that the cornerbacks, that's been our weakest link in this defensive scheme. But now Colby Richardson, with him being the weakest, you have to possibly take him out if he can't get the job done. With that, who is a guy to look out for that could possibly take his spot? Um, I mean, like I said, you know, I, I think Terrence Welsh has a lot of talent that he can, you know, bring. Um, and, you know, we can see what he can do against his New Mexico State team. And, you know, also Seven Banks can take his spot as well, but not because Seven Banks wouldn't start just because, you know, they might, you know, put him in his position, take him out, and then put him in the Terrence Welsh somewhere else. Um, but, you know, I could see either of them getting reps in uh, his position. Yeah, I agree with Liam. I'm a little more higher on Seven Banks than I am, so I think – or – than the other guy, so I think Seven Banks would be the guy to take Colby Richardson's spot. I could see a guy like Terrence Wells just trying to get him comfortable, at least for this week against New Mexico State. I could see Seven Banks coming in against SEC play as he is a former Ohio State transfer. But for this game, I would like to see Terrence Wells try to get him comfortable, try to have him fit and make a role in this offense if Colby Richardson is a guy that you have to look out for and possibly isn't a guy who belongs right now on this in this LSU defensive backs room. Let's talk about Harold Perkins. We discussed him a little bit, as Liam had mentioned him before, and his pass rushing skills. He stepped up last week against Mississippi State, him along with Jay Ward, who has 15 tackles. Perkins, what role does he play this week against New Mexico? I mean, I could see him, you know, just having that edge rusher role, but just an increased uh, role. Um, you know, Brian Kelly said in, in a press conference Monday that he found, like, his niche is, is that kind of, like, edge rusher like duo with you know with BJ so I feel like he's gonna he might play a little middle linebacker like he did against Mississippi State just kind of starting in the middle and then going to edge and you know keeping that rotations good because it keeps the offense honest and you know it, it lets us take advantage of their poor offensive line. Yeah I expect Harold Perkins to be let loose like just like he was last week he was playing free he was playing physical and Brian Kelly's always preaching on that and I think he might be able to top his performance from last week or at least replicate it. Oh I agree totally 
do exactly what you did last week. He's learning. He's getting used to the game. And it's exciting. H Harold Perkins was highly recruited. And the fact that he was able to decommit from Texas A&M, come over to LSU, now he's here. Let him make important plays. And pass rushing is key, especially now that you're thinking that Miles Kendrick is the guy to look out for. And that's how you stop this New Mexico offense this week. Going back to Dante Martin, who we had mentioned a few times, cornerback for New Mexico. He snagged an interception last week against UTEP in his win. Is there any possibility that he could snag one against Malik Neighbors this weekend? Uh, I mean, you know, anything could happen. But I feel like Jaden has uh, improved his, his decision-making, you know, uh, more. And, you know, not that Jaden was like, an inter like a turnover machine or anything, but... You know, I, I feel like he's, he's played well enough, and, you know, he's not, he's not going to throw anything that, you know, someone like Dante Martin could catch. Yeah, building off what Liam was saying, Jane Daniels has been really clean with the ball. I don't think it's anything that Malik Neighbors is going to do that will cause an interception this week. I think Martin is not getting a pick this week. I think Jane Daniels is still going to have a zero in the interception column after this week. The only place I could see him getting an interception is if he stays in the game when we bring a guy in like Garrett Nussmeyer or even possibly Walker Howard and maybe put in some of our backup wideouts in. That's what I could see him him having the opportunity to say, oh, look, I got an interception against LSU. But Jaden Daniels has been clean, has been cut, and so is Malik Neighbors. He's very limited on mistakes when he's playing in that slot position, and I expect the same this weekend against New Mexico. As we wrap this up, at what point does this game get out of hand? What quarter? Um, I, I, you know, I'm feeling like maybe second quarter. First quarter, I could see them, you know, putting up a fight, and then by the end of the first quarter, maybe it's getting a little like, okay, you know, they're starting to score some more, and then, you know, in the second quarter, I feel like it, they're going to break it open and, you know, get this game to be a blowout. I think the third quarter is the sweet spot for that. I think the second going into halftime will be like two, three possession game, which like isn't out of reach yet, especially with like a half football left. I think the third quarter is when they just start piling it on them. I see this being a difficult game from the second quarter where a Southern it was a little different. It was like the first quarter where we were all ready to go home, where New Mexico State could put up a little bit more of a fight possibly with their defense. I don't have their offense. It's very shaky just because they have a lot of issues there and not a lot of star players, as some may say. But if they do develop a good rotation and they can develop having some connections, they could possibly score some points in the first quarter. But after that, I could see LSU taking this game away, resting their starters and preparing for next week. What would you like to see LSU fix this week before they get into the bulk and the meat of these SEC games? I feel like the biggest thing for me is just the penalties because that can cost you in any game. And, you know, on the line, it's just it, – that's another thing, like we said earlier, it's just discipline and practice. I feel like, you know, if you can fix that, that kind of fixes the root of a lot of your problems on offense. And then another thing is just, you know, I, I love how Jaden scrambles. I, li I like how that, you know, adds another dimension to our offense. But sometimes I feel like he scrambles too much, and that's tiring himself out. And then, you know, when you need to make – big plays or big throws he can't because he's too tired from running so those are just a couple things I could think of yeah I think the offensive line is the biggest thing that needs to improve and I think they are slowly progressively improving but they need to get there soon because they have some talented SEC pass rushers coming up on their schedule and they could really wreck the game for them definitely I agree with both of you all this LSU offense is running out of time in the future they could possibly lose games for this LSU team if they do not get their act together and part of that is just cleaning up penalties as I mentioned, the fundamentals of football, getting back to them, figuring out a good combination between Jaden Daniels and this offensive line and making sure that they're in sync. Let's talk about score predictions. New Mexico, LSU, 630 in Tiger Stadium. Liam, who wins? What's going to be the final score? I think it's going to be LSU. Uh, and I think we're going to win by a lot. About like I think it's going to be mm, 41 to 10. I feel like it's going to be in the, in the beginning. It's going to be, you know, like Nick was saying, they're, they're going to fight. They're not going to just, you know, lay down and just let us, you know, run all over them. You know, they're going to put up a fight and, you know, it's gonna, they're going to score a couple times, but I, I don't think it's going to get too, uh, too, too, too difficult for the Tigers. Yeah, I was in the newsroom this morning taking notes on, like, some of the questions y'all sent in, and we got to the score prediction. I was like, I asked my trainee, David, I was like, David, give me a score prediction. <laughs> he tells me 55 to 6. So okay. I'll go 55 to 6. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Now, just to give you some facts about New Mexico, they are 1-13 and 13 against SEC teams. The only time they beat an SEC team was against Missouri back in 2005 when they were part of the Big 12. So they've never gotten a true SEC win, and they are 0-3 against any Louisiana college football team. LSU is going to keep this going. They're going to go 1-14 against SEC teams this weekend, and they'll be 0-4 against Louisiana college football teams. I think LSU does take this game away 51-10. to Why I'm saying 10 is because of their kicker, George Steinbeck Camp. He had a career 
long of 51 last week in their win against UTEP. So I could possibly see a guy like that coming in, scoring an early field goal, and then seeing them just get one touchdown. But as we mentioned, it will definitely be hard for this team to get down the field with how great this LSU defense has been this season. With that, thank you so much, Liam Haley and Nick Lopez, for joining me. As I had mentioned, the Tigers will take on New Mexico at 6.30 p.m. in Tiger Stadium as both teams look to go 3-1 and one on the season. This has been the Tailgate Show. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Lena Prima, and you're listening to 91.1 KLSU Baton Rouge.